What's going on people? In this video, I'm going to teach you all about threading in Java. Threading allows a program to run multiple tasks simultaneously. It helps to improve performance with time-consuming operations, such as file input-output, network communications, or any other background tasks. Any code that is considered time-consuming, we can have it run on a different thread, so that it doesn't inconvenience our main program. There's two options to creating a thread. Option 1 is to extend the thread class. This is the simpler option, but it's limited. Option 2 is to implement the runnable interface. This option tends to be better, because by extending the thread class, we're limited to single inheritance, but by implementing the runnable interface, that's one way around that. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you option 2. It's actually not that more difficult than option 1, and it gives you more possibilities. I'll give you a demonstration of why threading is useful. In this program we're about to write, let's say it's a game, or a quiz or something. A user has 10 seconds to respond, and if they don't, time's up. Currently we have one thread. We're running our program on what is known as the main thread. Without using any other threads besides the main thread, I might write my program something like this. We'll start with the scanner because we'll be accepting user input. Scanner scanner equals new scanner. Pass in system.in, import this class, and close your scanner when you're done with it. Scanner.close. We're going to let a user know that they have, let's say, five seconds to enter their name. You have five seconds to enter your name. We will create a prompt. Enter your name. I'll use print rather than print line. We will assign a string variable of name, use our scanner, call the next line method. And then once we have the name, we'll output hello plus the user's name. Hello plus name. So let's do a test run. Currently, we don't have a timer set up. You have five seconds to enter your name. I can type in a name, hit enter. We display hello the name. And then the program exits. Processed finished with Xcode zero. If we were creating some sort of timer, we could do the following. To make this simple, we could use a for loop. The for loop is going to cycle five times. We will have an index of i. Int i equals one. That's where we'll start. We'll continue as long as i is less than or equal to five and then increment i by 1. During each cycle of the for loop, to mimic waiting for one second, you can access the thread class, call the sleep method, pass in 1000 milliseconds. When you use thread, that refers to the current thread that we're working with, in this case, the main thread, which is what our main program runs on. But since our thread might be interrupted, we do need a try and catch block, because this is considered dangerous code. We will try this code, where we will have our main Java thread sleep for 1000 milliseconds. And we will catch the following exception, an interrupted exception. So within our catch block, we will catch any interrupted exceptions, which we will name E. If our thread is interrupted, we will say, thread was interrupted. In our imaginary timer, We'll need an exit condition. Let's say if our index of i is equal to 5, that means time's up. So we'll output time's up. I'm going to show you why this won't work the way that we think. We have 5 seconds to enter our name, but there's no prompt or anything. Then we get the message time's up. And only after that loop is complete are we allowed to enter our name. And then we can type in our name. We get the output of hello our name. And then the program exits. So the problem that we're running into is that all of this code is running on our main thread. We have five seconds to enter our name, but we can't reach that code until the five seconds are up. Because our main thread is waiting for this loop to finish. So what we could do is create a separate thread where we're counting to five. And our main thread is going to be in charge of accepting our user input. So here's how to create another thread. We're going to extend the runnable interface to create a runnable object. 
Let's go to File, New, Java Class. This will be a class. We'll name this class My Runnable or something unique that's relevant to what you're creating. My Runnable is going to implement, because we're working with interfaces, the Runnable interface. If you implement an interface, it's kind of like you're signing a contract. We have to override any required methods. We need to override the run method. We need the at override annotation. Then we will override the run method, public void run. Within this run method, we're going to add any code we want to run in the background on a separate thread. Going back to our main Java file, we're going to cut this loop and then paste it within the run method. When we call this run method, we'll have this countdown timer running in the background on a separate thread. Any code you want to run on a separate thread, place within the run method. All right, going back to our main Java file, we'll tell the user they have five seconds to enter their name. We have our class of my runnable. We will create a my runnable object or whatever it is that you named this class. Let's say my runnable will be the name of the object equals new my runnable. We will take this runnable object, pass it into the constructor of the thread class. Here's where we're going to create a new thread. Thread, thread equals new thread. Pass in your runnable object as an argument to the thread constructor. Now we just need our thread to start. You'll take your thread, Call the start method, and this should work. Let's try it. You have five seconds to enter your name, and we get that prompt of enter your name, but I'm not going to type in anything. We get the message time's up because we ran out of time. Let's try it again. I'll type in my name this time. There we go. We get our output, hello bro. Then we get the message time is up. Both these threads are running at the same time. The code within our run method is running on a separate thread. It's running in the background while our main program is running. So that's why threads are useful. So let me extend this time. Let's say 10 seconds. If I is equal to 10, just to give us some more time. You have 10 seconds to enter your name. Now check this out. You have 10 seconds to enter your name. I'll type in my name immediately. We get the output, hello, whatever your name is. But the program is still running because that second thread is still running in the background. Our program doesn't exit until all threads are done. If your main thread is done, you can end all other threads, but you'll want to set those threads to be what is known as daemon threads. A daemon thread will end when the main thread is over. We will take our thread, call the set, daemon method pass in true this thread is going to end as soon as our main thread is finished let's try it again you have 10 seconds to enter your name i'll type in my name we get our output and then our program exits without saying time is up processed finished with exit code zero that's because we set our second thread to be a daemon thread it ends when the main thread is over now on the other hand Let's say that we wait for time to be up. We wait the full 10 seconds. Time's up. Our program isn't over yet. We're still waiting for user input and I can still type it in. Hello, bro. Process finished with exit code zero. Optionally, what you could do to get your program to exit, go to your runnable class, wherever you would like your program to exit, when seconds equals 10, that's where I would like to exit. To exit the program prematurely, I can access system, call the exit method, pass in an exit code of zero. That will end the program. All right, let's try this again. You have 10 seconds to enter your name. I'm not gonna type in anything. I'm just gonna wait for the full 10 seconds. Time's up, and then our program exits. But that's what we want though. The way that we've set up this program is that we want this program to exit either when we finish typing in our name or we run out of time. All right, everybody, so that is an introduction to threading. 
It allows a program to run multiple tasks simultaneously. It helps to improve performance with time-consuming operations. It's useful with file input and output operations, network communications, or any other background tasks. And well, everybody, that is an introduction to threading in Java.